Well, welcome back. By request and necessity, we will be replacing our front struts on the W205 today. So buckle up and hang on. We're gonna go through the whole process together. There's a multi-purpose tool. Give them a wiggle. Yeah, that is all you do. Good times, okay, well that one's off. There it goes. Let's run these nuts down until the top of the nut is a tiny bit above the top of the bolt part. And this is what put this one in a bind. Is that. Okay, cool. The, the back of this slips in under the windshield, kind of like a piece of weather stripping. It sits in this little groove. Kind of peel and wiggle. Wiggle and peel. Whichever one's easier. See? Just like that. A little plastic piece underneath here. And here we have the top of our strut. A bolt right here, a bolt right there, and a bolt right there. 16 millimeter, which is the same as 5 eighths. Dose and trace. And you'll notice our strut fell out of the car. And I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, check this out. We unbolted the top of our strut. When we did, it fell out. It fell out because over the period of the, about the past month or so, we've been hearing a creaking noise in the front suspension. And I didn't think too much of it. I thought, well, whatever it is, we'll keep getting worse and creak more until it's obvious. And then I took the time when we were all on break and at home to uh, inspect a little closer and the front struts felt pretty weak. I was trying to bounce it and I could hear the creak pretty, pretty uh, prominently. And so I thought, well, it needs front struts. So I did the brakes and then I took it out for a test drive. On the way home, it, it kind of made a little popping sound. Just one, actually one good pop. And then it felt like my front left suspension collapsed, which it sort of did because the bottom mount broke. So it probably had cracked and broken on one side and had been sitting there creaking and rocking. And these are the factory Bilstein struts, which I'm not here to attack Bilstein. In their defense, we live down a very rough road. I say very rough, it's, it's very like this. And uh, sometimes we might drive a tiny bit too fast down it. And I'll also say that since we've owned this car, we've put 100,000 miles on it living here with that road. So I'm pretty confident going back with the exact same part by the, made by the exact same company. And I think it'll be okay. I think Bill Steen makes a good product. I just think that we maybe treated it a little harshly. We weren't like rally car rough with it or anything, but maybe in a way we were. So, so keep an eye out for stuff like that. You hear weird, weird creaking noises, look at all your welds and everything, because it might be something like that that could break, and that could have been a bad deal in the right situation. Luckily, I was going 10 miles an hour down, a, down my driveway when it broke, so there's that. So we need to remove the mounting portion of the bottom of the strut next okay yeah got a, a head on one side nut on the other side feels pretty big i'm gonna take a wild guess that's a 21 millimeter here's a 21 this is also a 13 16 in imperial and it is a 21 and it is also tough to get to this close to the ground If you ever want to know one of the reasons why a Mercedes-Benz is a fun car to have, look how stiff this chassis is. This is probably a part of the reason why the strut even broke. I had the car jacked up in one point. My rear tire is off the ground too. Take a look at how much the, the body flexes. Huh, it doesn't. So that's a pretty good chassis. You're not going to get that out of a, I don't know, much of anything else out there. So that's kind of cool. This is the benefit of a rock driveway. You can dig little clearance trenches. I think that's actually threading off. Or I'm just twisting the whole doodad. Slowly but slowly. Okay, that's coming off. Yeah. I never recommend not using a jack stand. I might find a way to get one under here. 
Another tip, once your sizes get large enough, a whole lot of them translate over from metric to imperial. Like this is a 15 16 and it's a perfect fit because it's probably the same as, I should know this, but it's, it's the same as a certain number of millimeters. It's not wanting to bend real easy, but I can get an open end of a 15 16 on it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do open end of 15 16 which is, is not, a, not a whole lot to grab a hold of, but it's something to watch me fumble through this. What are you doing? There you, okay. This lock nut works really well. I would say it's still good for another use. Okay, here's the bottom of the strut, which you can see broke on this side a long time ago because it's dirty. And these new brakes, it was holding on by just that and that. Probably a while. That's why it was all creaky. Now here's the fun part, because this can be really dangerous. So you need to make sure that you, honestly, you treat it like a live weapon. Never point this either direction at anything you wouldn't want to destroy when you're taking this apart. So not at your face, not at your body altogether, not at anybody you know, not even at anyone you don't like. Once this thing's coming apart, you, this is your only, only work angle is from the side. It's okay, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're back again. I have my Matco spring compressor that I probably bought 25 years ago. And you know what? It looks like it's gonna work like a champ on this. I've heard different reviews on whether or not you should use a uh, impact on these. I've seen people do it, nothing went wrong. But if you don't use an impact, you can do it more slowly. You really wanna get these directly across from each other best you can. Those are close to being that way. Get that out of the way. If you don't feel comfortable taking the springs off of your struts, then I recommend you don't do it. You, you can take these to a shop that has a strut machine, and they can do it for you. It won't cost you a fortune. I don't know how much it'll cost. Maybe an hour of labor per one or something, or I don't know, something like that. I, I can tell you that the times I've used an actual strut compressor. I've had closer encounters with, with danger than I have doing it this way. But you won't be doing it. You, you might even be paying someone to do this, for all you know. I'll tell you this though, there's, there's a fair amount of pressure on this strut. The spring is wound up pretty damn tight. I'm gonna put quite a bit more on this side. It's starting to come off the seat. Just an itty bitty little bit. I haven't done this in a long time. We'll see what I what I come up with here, but it'll it'll come off the seat. This spring tool is cool because these have little bearings in them and they can hinge. That helps this process out a whole lot. It's a good forearm workout too. Win-win. Keeping an eye on my differences side to side. Getting closer. The sun feels great. It was cold earlier, now it's feeling pretty toasty along with my workout here. This side looks less, less compressed. Compressing. Yeah, it looks like this one needs to go more. Not to the other one yet. Looks like it's pretty evenly compressing. I think we're getting close. Get off the seat, low seat pressure. The bottom of it, I think, is. Greatly reduced seat pressure. Oh yeah, we're turning now. Okay, as soon as the mount will turn on the coil, like that, then you're good to go. It doesn't like that. But it is working slowly and there's not spring pressure on it. And 
And now we're off. And you remember that this is still full of a ton of energy. So you never, you still never get on either end of it. Pull your little boot out. Come on, little boot. Come on, little boot. You won't fit through the bottom of the spring. You have to come out the top. Whatever you do, never get tempted to get on either end of this. The boot's off. And the strut is out. Ta-da! More than halfway there. Meeting some exercise goals. Placing some struts. All right, cool. Pull our new one out of the box. I'm gonna give you a, a fun little cheat sheet. We have a 2015 C300 Sport with the sport suspension, kind of obviously by what I just said. You can order the you can order your struts from a dealer, obviously, and I believe the part number to your factory strut with the Mercedes Benz logo on it is something along the lines of A205 320. 2330. That's the part that they show goes to this car. R15 model, that's not the, the part number that was on here, but it is the part number of the replacement. The part number on here is A205 320 15 13. The new one that you'd get for your sport would be A205 320 2330, which, if you order it from Rock Auto, translates to the 24 2513 41. BE3 I 818. And this is a Bilstein, just like this one. It just doesn't have a Mercedes Benz logo on it or Mercedes Benz part number. It's quite a bit cheaper that way. So, lay our old part right here. Here's our new part. Just stick this little doodad right in here. Line up the bottom of the mount. I might even grease this up a little bit just because I like grease and I already have some out here. I well, added cushion to collect dirt throughout the years. Get that all probed up in there. Get my dust boot. It feels f okay. There we go. That's the problem. Get my dust boot back in there. Press it on all the way. Inspect my mount, which I think still looks excellent. Put a little grease on there, just because we like the grease. Take a look at all your spring positionings. Take a glance into there. It's already showing how it looks like this compressor is not holding it exactly how we want it. Okay, I'm gonna take my socket with my bare hand there. Let's run down. Does this give us a torque spec? It does. Do not use impact tool to loosen or tighten fasteners due to possible damage to the product. Self-locking nuts must only be used once. Well, it came with a new one, so we're good there. Oh, it gives you torque specs per size of thread, or per size of bolt. Why does it do that? Before releasing the spring, care is to be taken to ensure that the spring rests in the cutouts of top and bottom spring plate. I guess that means have the spring in the right position. I like the words they use though, that's cool. Okay, get a torque wrench. Let's go for 30 Newton meters. An Allen key in an open style socket would be ideal. Okay, let's try a few different things here. Get the old strut out of the way. And if they were kind to us, they would put a wrenchable spot on this shaft, but then it so it's a five millimeter Allen. Not my first choice in methods of operation on this project. I'll probably, I'll probably honestly end up just using the impact that you're not supposed to do. What is that, a B? It's just wild hair. It's probably a wild hair B. Come on, socket, go back on there. 
slip this right back in there where it was. Man, I don't think I can. There we go. Okay, that's bottomed out. Glancing in there, you can see that it is. Let's see if it'll let you do anything else to it without. No, so we'll just turn the turn the doodad. I'm gonna put just a little bit of pressure on this. Okay, we're gonna call that appropriately torqued. To each their own. Okay, the nut is adequately torqued with our impact we weren't supposed to use. So now all we do is back these off proportionately. It only takes a little while. Okay, this is always fun and exciting. It's things like this that you do to save a couple hundred bucks paying somebody. I don't remember how much this compressor costs. I know I bought it probably 25 years ago. All right, strut is reassembled. Get the jacket settled back down. Okay, now even though this is all reassembled, it's still under a great deal of pressure. It's still a live weapon. So you, st you should still aim it like a live weapon. Don't point it at anything you care about. That's my safety tip of the day. Now we'll go put it back in the car. Here we have our, our reassembled strut. It's still a live weapon. I mean, it looks at least fairly close. So now, when I hold that up in there like that. I'm gonna start, start these nets. In the perfect world, you have a lift so your other wheel's not compressed against the ground like this one is. I'm gonna have to raise the other side of the car in order to get this in. And that's okay. I need to lower this side of the car down onto something so I can get the jack around the other side. Where do we like to put our jack stand? Do we like it under that arm? I really don't. I really don't like that. We're already using our lift point. And then if we use that, we're compressing it anyway. We need to jack out the other side of the car and then put something under it. Mm hmm. That's a lift point. Right in the center and the front. Goober, why didn't I use that before? Okay. We have an idea. Back onto the theory of work smart, not hard. Go back with the same less than favorable lift point right quick and just see if it's going to want to try to fall over or not. Are you going to fall over? Okay, don't fall over. Move them all, move all my wrenches. Cheap ones and the expensive ones. Move my wheel. Pick up my little two and a half ton jack. Carry it around to the front here. Use my front lift point. That's high enough. Here's what I should have done from the beginning. Like I said earlier, I've rarely ever had to work on one of these cars without a lift. Here we are. We are right about there. Okay. For the reinstallation of the, of the first strut, I need to lower the second strut. Take your little wheel off here. Set it over out of the way. Okay, now the wheel's out of the way. We can access the bottom of the strut. First, we're just gonna take the top loose. This arm, this lower arm, you need to loosen it where that bushing is because it's holding the suspension up in this position. Along with this one down here. So we need to loosen those bolts. We'll just loosen the front and rear arms of both sides of the vehicle. Make it sound more official by calling it a vehicle. Okay, we're going back on with the strut. 
We have it in at the top with the nut started. And our, our suspension has very little movement because these bushings on the arms need to come loose. And where this gets fun is you now have to pull the inner fender, inner fender liners out to get to those fasteners. Okay, look for all the push pins. There's one down here. Push pin number one. Get all these push pins out without mangling the life out of them, like I'm probably doing here. Sometimes I'll use pliers on there too. Pliers. Pull part of it out. There's the rest of it. I'll go ahead and put it back together so I don't lose any of those pieces. One right here. There's a nut there. There's a nut there. Right there. Another one on the ground. More push bins down here in the back. Okay, we think all the fasteners are out of this. No, we don't. There's still more in the front. Okay. Look out for critters when you pull these off. Might have a squirrel living in there or something. Whenever you meet one of those up close and personal, a lot of times they tend to freak out a little bit. So be mindful of that. And this is supposed to separate, but since the rear of it's loose anyway, we want all of it out. I might just pull it all out as one piece. Easy as pie. Just falls out in your lap, just right, just like that. Okay, cool. Now we can see everything better. In addition to being able to reach it a whole lot better, factory fresh in here. Oh, there's our, there's your washer reservoir for the windshield. If you ever need to access that, it's in here behind the, the driver fender liner. Now we're gonna loosen that bolt and that one down under there. All skid plate stuff, it has to come out. The inner fender liner, I'm gonna get up underneath here and take out the, uh, the lower skid plate. Which, the only thing to know about that is just be safe, don't let the car crush you. Get it on jack stands, just like we're sorta of doing right now, sorta, of, sorta, of, sorta. Of. You have to tighten these at ride height for a reason because the bushings are part of the suspension system and they hold it all. Hold it all in place, make it make it have crazy good handling. All the fender liners, both the fender liners, this side and the other side are out. The skid plates are out. Some of this is gonna be a little backwards for you because our strut was broken. So to take it out, we just pull the pieces out. But in order to remove the strut in the first place, you'll have to remove all these things I've been removing. All the skid plates, the, the inner fender liner, the loosening these, these control arms, we're gonna go ahead and pull loose the uh, sway bar. I think we are. Man, that bushing feels funky. Now this thing is completely independent from everything else in the whole rest of the world. The lower control arms are loose. The sway bar is disconnected. Now you just stick your little pry bar in here. Now we can just weasel our strut up and over, just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and pull it back out of the way so we can twist it appropriately. It does need to be twisted. Maybe I'll use an awl for that. I happen to have an old half inch bolt from my retaining wall project. I'm gonna use that as an awl, an awl, however you say it, to spin my, oh yeah, there we go. Spin my, the base of my strut around to line up. Look right? Yeah, it looks sure does look close if it's not right. Now, get this little wiring harness piece out of the way. Get my strut over in position. Oh, that's perfectionary. It's beautiful. This had the, the bolt coming through from the back and the nut on the front, so that's how we're going to put it back in. 
He's a skinny forged steel Matco ratchet handle as an all. I line up my bolt hole there. Get my bolt in. It's not lined up, is it? it just, just thought it was. There it goes, that's probably better. Okay. You can pry up like that. Now the bolt's all the way in. Pry between the base of the strut and that, that rear control arm. Cool. Just zip that sucker down to a million foot pounds and reinstall everything. One strut in, not, not fully installed. The first strut is all back in place. The bolts are all in, but they're not tightened down yet. So now we're going to remove the sway bar link from the sway bar, and that will allow us to swing this down low enough to get this strut out. As you might can tell, I'm already getting tired. This is a lot more strenuous to do at home on the ground than it is, say, to do on a lift. Ugh, it's like pulling a transmission. Cakewalk on a lift with the right tools, but basically physical abuse if you're doing it at home in the driveway. This one wasn't crazy tight, though. I appreciate that. Nut removed from sway bar to sway bar link. Take a pry bar. Doesn't have to be as big as the one I had handy, but it's the one I had handy. Okay, that one's too big to even get back. Full of food. I took a food break. Now I'm full and slow. Full, slow, and tired. It pays to have a full set of pry bars. I'll just stand right here in front of the camera. Come on, sway bar bolt. You are just fat jammed up against that there strut. Okay, pretend you can look through this control arm. And when you do, you'll see that I'm, I'm backing off this, this nut at the bottom of the strut. 21 millimeter or 13 sixteenths on the nut side and 15 sixteenths on the bolt side. The bolt head of this is very shallow. It pays off to be kind of slow and gentle with it. Okay, the stubborn nut has been removed from the bottom of the strut. On the second side, which this is the side where the strut was not broken in half. So we ac actually have to disassemble everything enough to get this one out. Go ahead and walk our bottom bolt out of here. All kinds of pressure. Okay, the stubborn lower strut bolt has now been removed. Now the sway bar link can, can dangle, which means we should be able to turn the wheel all the way to the right, just like that. Get our big pry bar under here. Before we get too carried away, we need to get this wire loom section here detached from the base of the strut. Release the lock tab on this strut like that. Boom. The wheel back closer to being straight. Get the top, top bolts back in the holes and out it comes. Yay! Alright. Now we just remove, remove a roux, that from that.
pre-installing starboard side strut. This only goes in one way. Look at how the spacing is. Ah. So how about like that? Let's stick that in there. Like that. Red one down, red two down. Take a long bolt, just like the one we have right here. And use this to spin the base of your strut around. Where it lines up with your lower arm down there. And you take your large pry bar, don't pinch any lines, pry that down. Yet again, not pinching any lines. And get that up over the arm. And now, you restart your sway bar link. That's restarted all the way in. And now you can move the bottom of your strut to where you want it. Don't put your head in there. We're gonna lube that up a, a lot. That was pretty easy there. Run the bolt to the bottom. That's thoroughly started. Take its big giant castle nut and get it started. Run that on. Reclamp our clamp around the strut. And put its, fasten its little clip. Fasten its little clip. Take my gloves off so I can feel what I'm doing. Okay. Refasten clip. Refastening clip. Clip refastened. Okay, cool. Now we get to tighten back down our lower strut point. After we reinstall our warm hat. Everyone wants to see that part. That feels so much better. My ears are frozen. Frozen. Be cold to be on a boat right now. Guess they don't mind being cold. Oh man. Yeah, let's get this lower bolt here nice and tight. That's, that's pretty tight. Zip these down. We did start that this bolt on this side, didn't we? Oh yeah, nut is on it. Torque to spec. Torque to spec. We never had to remove this tie rod end, but I'm kind of glad I did because it just shows it didn't give me any, any grief. It just came off. Didn't, didn't even get to use the hammer. I just took it apart. It looks funny. Why does it look funny? There's light, light shining on it through a hole. That's why it looks funny. Now the head's starting to turn. This is one of those fasteners that you just really get good and tight. That's the German term. Get this nice and tight here. It's pretty tight. I need to run down the bottom. I need to tighten that 
a little nut job up. I need to run this back in here. Sway bar blink. Need to go back through there. Take your medium sized pry bar. Get that all zipped in. Put the nut back on. Walking around the other side and do the same. Sway bar end link we can go ahead and tighten because it has more of a bearing than a bushing in the way. Lay on the ground. Show your dedication. It's all zipped, zipped down. Zippity doo dah. <clears throat> okay, other side. Okay, we're tightening down some more fun components you can't really see from over there. I'm tighten up our lower, lower strut bolt here. Stick this on the other end. Because you know it's not going to slip off every two seconds. Yeah. Not getting my legs under it, just in case it does fall. It's probably giving y'all vertigo watching that light move past my ratcheting arm. Let's try that. And that's tight. Okay, torque to spec. Now we're gonna reinstall the wheelhouse here. Kind of like putting pants on an elephant or something. We've got this. Keep all the rocks out of it. Make sure things that are supposed to go on top go on top. Supposed to go on bottom, go on bottom. Remember how things came apart. Yeah, I see where you went. You went right on top. You went right up here. Just like that. And then in. You just roll all that in like that. Keep rolling it in like that. Locate all the bolt holes. And there's one, two, four, and five. Just like that. Push pins. I like using nails. Now we take our 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Zip them down. Zippity dip. That was one, two, three. Now we've got four and five right back here. Four and five. Our objective here is to reinstall every single thing except tighten the lower control arms. Uh, we'll get to that and I'll show you what, what we're gonna do. Fender liner number two. whip it on in there just like just about like that front first all this goes on top of the bumper and the front skid plate and just wrestle that in there about like that just about like that and kind of get up under here without getting your leg under the a rotor or, or your middle. Okay, cool. All those are started. If you're still with us, I do appreciate it. Pushing all the push pins in. Do it the boring way by hand and not use a hammer. Line up that hole and that hole. And then this will just line up right on top. Just like that. And you can lock all these back in. All safe and secure. Latch those two. Okay, we're back into the car. The car's weight is back on the wheels on these ramps so that I can tighten up these control arms. And then we should be good to go. Remember, these need to be really, really tight. So don't be too shy about it. Just tighten them down. You need to get them real tight. I've had suspension noises in these cars just be these 
bolts weren't tight enough. It's pretty damn tight right there. Okay. Well, you get all the arms tight. I don't know what you're looking at. If you're looking at me, if you're looking at my lower control arm. Okay. I'm going to call that one tight. Same thing on the other side. Now I can put my skid plates on again. And I'll go drive it. See what it do. My last on the back session, hopefully. For at least a while, I guess. At least a while, I guess. Like a grasshopper collector. I doubt that's what they call it, but pretty well what it is. Ay, 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 ay. The fun part about this is that it's dark, so you can't really see what I'm doing, but I also can't see what I'm doing. Just sort of winging it in the dark. Oh, okay, there we go. This thing really does have to weasel up in here. Something about like that. Sort of. No, something about like that on that side. Something about like that, maybe. Maybe, is that right? Holy crap, it's raining. Raining on my camera. I need to move you just inside that doorway. My little two and a half ton jack out of the way. Can't have my camera getting wet. What will we do? Oh yeah, we'll put that under there. And you put this under that. And get all this stuff to line back up. About like that. And you get all your fun work lamps lined all back up again. And you get to look at my back while I reattach a skid plate. The skid plates are pretty useful though. They get destroyed over time, but in doing so, they keep your car from getting destroyed. They keep your car from absorbing it. You might have to pay a couple hundred bucks to replace these after several years, but you're not replacing your core support, your transmission, your engine, anything else that's expensive. Oh, now I have my feet out in the rain. My ears coming out of my hat. Feet in the rain. It's really important to get the skid plate back on right because you don't want to be that guy that has the skid plate that's like flapping in the wind under his car. It's probably making tons of noise, and they don't know what's wrong with their car. They just know that, know that it makes noise down the highway. Don't let that be you. Okay, I see a couple more. I have three bolts, three screws on me. I see two so far. There's this one here. There's one. There's two. Where's that third one that needs one of these? It's gotta be back here somewhere. So long as I've messed with these, I always feel like I have to look for the holes. Okay, that's on. That's on. Is it this one here? It's good old, old fashioned. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty important one. Oh, man, we got the got the new Strutleys on here. Zip down my skid plates. Got my little zip zip gun. Close your eyes when you tighten them so you don't get all the dust in your face or in your eyes or in your mouth. That one's already tight. That one doesn't have one because it's. We should start. We should start a really sexist study to see if the underside of a man's car. Age is better than the underside of a female's car. <sighs> Today's world, that's probably a frowned upon subject, but pretty sure I know what the results would be. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure my wife would agree with what the results would be. Tight, tight. That one's not very tight. It's better. Roll on out of here in the wet. Now let's, let's move the truck, then the car. Test drive time. We've got the new struts on. Let's go for a test drive. drive went great on the new struts. As you see, we also have some new front tires. That'll help too. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.